Hey everybody, today we are going to open up this case of 1997 Pinnacle Inside. Some of you guys have been asking for me to break this open since you saw me pick it up at the flea market last week. I paid $50 for it inside the case. There's not just baseball cards, there are cans. Instead of packs, the cards are literally inside of cans. Uh, you can see it says the first ever baseball card in a can. Honestly, I really don't know what Pinnacle was thinking when they did this. Personally, I never bought these as a kid. This was about the time when I stopped collecting. Um, stopped collecting about 98. So we're going to open this up and see what we find and see if it's cool or not. You never know. It could be cool. Let's bust it open here. All right, here we go. It looks like there's a perforated edge on each side, and we're going to just tear it open right here. Now, you can see the cans making their debut during this break here. Pretty strange. We've never done this before. Um, now, let me think of the best route to go next. I don't want to destroy the box. And I want to try to keep it on the screen as I'm opening the stuff up. So, let's see here. I can do this. I guess we'll open up the top. That might work. Inside, there is... You can't really see this, but I'll show you. There is some literature. I guess not literature, but it is the... Um, it's like a giant piece of cardboard that shows you the can. So, I guess when they sold these at the card store... They just literally put the box out, this giant, um, I don't know, like two foot by a foot and a half box, and uh, they inserted this uh, kind of as the pop-up on the background. It says, look for all 24 cans, the first ever baseball card in a can. Now, a lot of you guys were not collecting in 97. I know a lot of you left the hobby um, for various different reasons, so this might be new to you. It is new to me, so let's check it out. There are, let me just show you here, there are a bunch of cans in here. It looks just like your soup cans. So we're just going to, I guess, pull this tab aside here. And away we go. It looks like I see a Mo Vaughn peeking out. And I see a Barry Bonds, which is pretty cool. Now, this is what's going to be a little bit difficult for me start with our first can. Our first can is a Ken Caminetti, former MVP. Ken Caminetti passed away, unfortunately, years ago. Um, nice, I guess, I don't know, they wanted to um, market these to folks that collect cans because there are people out there that do collect cans. Um, I'm not one of them, but at flea markets, I see collectible cans from time to time. You can see it says first ever baseball card in a can, and it actually is a pack of cards, 10 cards per can. Now, you would think that they would put a little pop tab on it, you could just lift it up, but no, there is literally no easy way to open this, which is really annoying. Like, if you're marketing this to like a 10, 11, 12 year old kid, um, I have a feeling that most 10, 11, 12 year old kids aren't really good with can openers because they probably. You know, don't eat that much soup. So I have my can opener here. And here we go. Never thought I would be using a can opener on a case break. Pretty interesting. So there's not dog food in here. There is that. There's a pack of cards. And let's take a look at this. We have Derek Bell on the top. And on the back, it just tells you these cans are cool to make you want to buy more of them. So let's open these up and see what we have here. Now, um, luckily, the corners aren't that bad at all. I was a little worried about that since they are in a can and not the greatest packaging just to be, you know, rattling around in a can. But since these are fresh from a case, um, they're in pretty good shape. So we've got Derek Bell, Tony Clark, who's the MLB Players Association uh, union head. There's an Eric Young, EY. We have Kareem Garcia, who was a nice prospect back in the day, but never really turned into too much. Steve Finley, nice leadoff hitter for a few years. Paul Wilson, part of the big three, the trio from the Mets. Paul Wilson, Isringhausen, and Bill Pulsifer that never really um, lived up to their potential. Tom Glavin, Hall of Famer. And a Derek Jeter, nice looking Derek Jeter card. So I would have rather just have had these in the packs. Um, the cans are a little bit much. 
There's the back of the card. They don't give you any stats. It just gives you a little bit of information about each player. Like um, it tells you that Derek Jeter is unflappable and his idol is Barry Larkin and his best friend is Alex Rodriguez. I don't know if that's true anymore. There's a, a Gary Sheffield and Ron Gant with the Cardinals. And then we have a little piece of information here telling you these cans are cool a great way to show off your cans is uh send them 30 additional dollars for a display um and i guess there's an instant win game that was going on because it tells us this card is not a winner so we'll have to see if we win i don't know how many of these i'm going to open up um just because it is rather annoying to um cut them open but here we go next can we have a barry bonds Barry Bonds, one of my favorite players during this time period. I hated Barry Bonds for a while. When he left the Pirates, man, I hated Barry Bonds, as um, pretty much everyone in Pittsburgh did at that time, because Barry Bonds was our best player, and he left us for the Giants after the 1992 season. And um, after Barry Bonds left, that started up a streak of 20 years of consecutive losing seasons in Pittsburgh. But still pretty cool. Um... This can's pretty cool, but time healed those wounds, and I started to appreciate Bonds as a player, <clears throat> mostly for the home runs. Obviously, something was not natural with his head size and everything, but I just, um, I really just liked watching uh, the way the game kind of changed when he came up the batter. Even like three batters um, prior to him coming up, you could see the wheels turning in the manager's heads. Like, how are we going to get around Bonds? Sometimes they would, actually, most of the time, they would just walk him. Here's an Andy Pettit. That's a nice early Andy Pettit. His rookie card, of course, is 93 Bowman. A Ruben Rivera from the Yankees. John Smoltz, Hall of Famer. Sammy Sosa. I like these cards. These cards are pretty nice. Dante Bichette, his son, Bo Bichette, is doing pretty well in his first year in the big leagues, or actually his first month of the big leagues. Camara Barti. Pirates uh, coach now, and Larry Walker, possible future Hall of Famer. Let's see if we are a instant winner. I'm kind of curious about that. I wonder how often we can win. Next, we have good old Mo Vaughn. Mo Vaughn, powerful hitter there. Big guy. Used to sometimes mimic his batting stance, playing with a ball. Kind of had a unique stance. All right, let's see what we have in this next can. Definitely have to have a can opener to do these. If you didn't have a can opener, you would um, definitely struggle. And I wonder how many kids tried to open one of these up without a can opener with scissors or rocks or knives. Probably not a good idea. I could probably see some kid out there maybe hurting himself with a knife trying to pry one of these cans open. Tino Martinez, Paul Molitor, Hall of Famer. Matt Williams, not a Hall of Famer, but a great player there. Carlos Delgado, another guy who fell off the ballot, probably should have got a little more, at least, consideration. If you get less than 5% of the vote for the Hall of Fame, you fall off and you don't appear on the ballot the next year, and he fell off rather quickly. Mark McGuire, and then, are we an instant winner? No, we're not. By the way, there are 150 cards in the set. Here's a nice Alex Rodriguez can, A-Rod. So I guess if you were going to display this, you would want this side facing out. Probably wouldn't want uh, this back side, but pretty cool for display purposes. Alex Rodriguez. There's also some insert cards in here, which are roughly one in every um, 47 packs called Pinnacle Inside 40-something. Um, those cards, according to the Beckett Almanac, are worth some decent money, and the best one... The best insert set looks like it's Pinnacle Inside Dueling Dugouts, if we can find those. Some of those cards are listed in the Beckett for up to $30 a piece. But once again, you could probably hop on eBay and find them for a lot cheaper. Anyway, here we go. Our next pack of cards from this can. We've got Rondell White, Rafael Palmero, Mike Mussina, Hall of Famer. That's a nice card of Mike Mussina. I like that picture. Ken Griffey Jr. I'm sure that some folks don't we we'll probably never even have seen these cards before. Chipper Jones, Jim Edmonds. A little bit of um, kind of like a 95 Fleer vibe going on here with all the text on the front, but it's not too unbearable. At least the main card is, um, at least the main picture is not 
obstructed by stats all over their faces like in 95 Fleer. Jim Tomey, Hall of Famer. Curtis Pride, by the way, if you didn't know, Curtis Pride was actually deaf and he could not hear. And he still was able to be a successful major leaguer. So always like stories like that about players that overcome odds to um, be successful. Like Curtis Pride, Jim Abbott was um, one of the most obvious ones. Frank Thomas, happy there. Happy Frank Thomas. That card kind of reminds me a little bit of the, uh, is it the 91 upper deck where he's not too happy? Let's see what we find in the Frank Thomas can. The Big Hurt, Hall of Famer. Again, these sold for $2.99 a can back in 1997. And they only did this for two years. Pinnacle did these in 97 and 98, and then they abandoned it after that. We got Greg Vaughn. He was a slugger. Cal Ripken Jr. is a good one, yelling out something. And then our next card is a Todd Walker. Sammy Sosa again. Kevin Apier actually not making an ugly face there. There he is making that face. A lot of his cards, he's only making such a max effort face. There's Roger Clemens, seven-time Cy Young Award winner, but not a Hall of Famer. I think one day he'll get in along with Bonds. Dave Nilsson, Australian. And Jermaine Allensworth, a Pirates prospect that never really materialized into anything much at all. And this card is not a winner. Our next can, we have a nice Manny Ramirez. Good old Manny being Manny. Another player with amazing stats, but likely will never be in the Hall of Fame just because of uh, all his PED suspensions and stuff like that. So... Great player for sure. My favorite Manny Ramirez moment is when he cuts off that throw from Johnny Damon, like 10 feet in front of Johnny Damon with a diving catch. All right, here we go. This pack is not wanting to open up. This card was seeing the light of day for the first time in basically forever, basically, since 97, since their existence. They've been stuck in this dark can. We've got Edgar Renteria here of the 97. World Series, by the way, in 1997. The, you might remember, the Marlins won the World Series. Matt Williams, Carlos Delgado, Mark McGuire again, and Dante Bichette for the second time. Are we a winner? No, we're not. So I'm wondering how often you can win. Next, we have a John Smoltz, Hall of Famer, John Smoltzy. By the way, there are 24 different cans, if I didn't mention that already. So we're going to see a couple duplicates because there's 48 in here. Let's see what we have coming out of this bad boy. We've got a Rafael Palmero, another guy with Hall of Fame stats, but will never be in there because he denied taking PEDs. And then like a week later, he was busted for PEDs and he blamed it on Miguel Tejada, giving him a, uh, I guess, some, I don't know, Vitamin B shot or something that was tainted. I can't really remember. Ken Griffey Jr. Again, that's a nice one. There's the back of it. You can see he was drafted number one overall in 1987 out of high school. Still never know why Topps didn't put him in the 89 Topps regular set. Ruben Rivera. Always get a little excited when I see Rivera's name on there with a Yankees uniform because I'm thinking it's Mariano, but it's not. There's an another Andy Pettit, John Smoltz, Barty again, Larry Walker again. Jim Tomey again, and Curtis Pride again. So we're starting to get some repeats. I don't know if I'll get through the entire can, especially if we keep having repeats. We might have to um, cut it short and send these off to my Patreon patrons at random. Next, Mark McGuire. The slugger Mark McGuire in his A's uniform. He was shortly thereafter traded to the Cardinals, and the rest is history. 1998 came around. Mark Barr went crazy with Sammy Sosa. And then just three short years later, McGuire was done out of baseball. 2001 was McGuire's last year in the major leagues. He had a really super low batting average. And, um, yeah, some people were thinking McGuire was going to go on to challenge maybe Babe Ruth's records, but his career kind of came to a, uh, a quick halt there not too long after the 98 season. But it was one of the greatest seasons of all time. If you like home runs, Barry Larkin, of course, now it's been forever tainted with PEDs. A lot of people kind of have a different opinion of that whole race. There's Frank Thomas, by the way. These are the same pictures that we're seeing on the can. 
which I guess is kind of cool. Doc Gooden, Dwight Gooden. Dan Wilson, Vladimir Guerrero Sr. That's a nice one. That's a an early Vladdy Sr. You can see it, see it says rookie card on there. Although his rookie card, for me at least, I consider 95 Bowman to be his rookie card, but still pretty cool. We also have an Ernie Young and good old Will the Thrill, Will Clark with the Rangers. Let's see if we're a winner. If we are a winner, it's probably long since expired. All right, next, Ken, let's do a Mike Piazza. Hall of Famer Mike Piazza. One of, uh, one of the best offensive catchers of all time. He's in the conversation with uh, Pudge Rodriguez, Carlton Fisk. He's one of the best offensive catchers, catchers of all time, Johnny Bench. Mike Piazza was drafted, what, what the 62nd round, I think, as a favor to Tommy Lasorda. And, um, man, did that ever uh, work out for the Dodgers. Alex Rodriguez, James Baldwin, Fred McGriff, the crime dog, Nafi Perez, Jason Kendall, John Wetland, Troy Percival, nice closer there for a good many years. Charles Johnson was a solid player. And Hall of Famer, Jeff Bagwell. Bagpipes. And are we a winner? No, we're not. Next up, let's do good old Tony Gwynn. Rest in peace, Tony Gwynn. Used to love listening to interviews of Tony Gwynn. He had an awesome voice, an awesome dialect. Just, um, you can tell he was an awesome dude. Tony Gwynn, another one to leave us far too soon. Possibly could have hit 400 or better back in the strike short in 1994 season. He was right, right there. Uh, when they walked off the field on August 11th, 94, for the last time that season. Bobby Bo, Bobby Bonilla Day, every July 1st, he gets over a million dollars from the Mets. Um, Got to be happy about that if you're Bobby Bo. Kenny Lofton, used to like Kenny Lofton a lot. Brett Butler, Juan Gon, Juan Gonzalez, Michael Tucker, speedy guy. Mark Grace, a lot of Cubs fans love Mark Grace. There's Yvonne Rodriguez engaging with a young fan. And Randy Johnson, actually smiling. Usually he looks pretty mean on his cards. And Terrell Wade from the Braves. Braves, a prospect that never really became a star. Remember getting a lot of his future star cards and stuff. All right, next up we have, speaking of future stars, this guy was good for a long time. Up until about the age of, uh, what was it, like 32 or so, Andrew Jones. A lot of us thought Andrew Jones was a surefire Hall of Famer, seeing him win gold glove after gold glove basically every single year. You might remember him coming up and playing in the that World Series back in, what was it, 96, I think? One of, the, one of those Yankees versus Braves World Series. Might have not have been 96. I think it actually might have been a little bit later. But here we go. Uh, Manny Ramirez is our next one. First card is Manny. And now there's Mariana Rivera. like that card a lot. The only player in baseball history to get 100% of the Hall of Fame vote. Only one ever. All the great players that have played, no one has ever gotten 100% except for Mariano. That might change next year if Derek Jeter gets 100%, but still, 100% is pretty good. It means um, everybody that voted for you thought you were one of the best of all time. And indeed, he was. Most saves of all time. How about a Hideo Nomo can? Hideo Nomo. You might remember Nomo Mania back in uh, 1995. I used to remember chasing after that Hideo Nomo Bowman card, 95 Bowman. The silver foil, the gold foil. I used to love that. I don't know if I should leave these um, can tops still on there or just take them off. I kind of feel like maybe I'm supposed to just take them off. I, I'm not exactly sure. I don't know, I'm not a can collector, so I, I'm not exactly sure. They probably look better if they're taken off, because if they're on there, it looks kind of sloppy. So, if you get a can from me in your Patreon package, I'm likely going to take that little um, topper off there. Steve Gibraltar, Chan Ho Park, Kevin Brown, and then we have a Tony Gwynn. There he is, Tony Gwynn. Just saw him on the can. Todd Green, Albert Bell, Don't Call Me Joey. And don't get in my way. Just ask Fernando Vina. Then we have John Mabry, Roberto Alomar, Hall of Famer. And we have a Most Valuable Player card here. This is pretty cool. 
an MVP insert card, the 1996 MVPs, Ken Camnetti and Juan Gonzalez. Um, checklist three of three. For some reason, I thought, I don't know if they won the MVP in 96 or 97. I thought Camnetti was 97 as an MVP. But anyway, it says this card is not a winner. Man, we still have a lot of cans left to go. Like I said, let's do um, let's do one more, and then I'm just going to show you all of the other cans that are remaining because um, usually all my standalone videos, I don't like them to be like an hour long. And if I did all these cans, we would be here for literally about an hour. So let's do one more. Let's finish off with Joey Bell. Don't call me Joey Bell, Albert Bell, and then we will go through and show you the rest of the can designs. And uh, some of you folks will receive one of these in your Patreon package this month or next or until they're gone. Come on. There we go. Albert Bell is the can and the cards. Let's see if we see any new ones in here. We have Jermaine Dye. I haven't seen that one yet. Jeff Facero. Nice lefty there from the Expos. Garrett Anderson. We've got Cecil Fielder making a weird face there. Just laughing. Slugger Cecil Fielder, Quentin McCracken, Raul Mondese, Ray Ordonez. Nice fielding shortstop for the Mets there. Tom Glavin, Derek Jeter again, and Gary Sheffield. And are we a winner? No, we're not. So I'm going to show you the rest of the cans now before we conclude this video. Just to give you an idea of the other designs, we have Cal Ripken Jr., which is pretty cool. We've got a Ken Griffey Jr., so a couple juniors there. Gonna have to make a little space here. Another Kyle Ripken Jr. I guess you could probably sell this unopened, these unopened cans. Usually I see them for around $5 if it's a good player at the flea market. Uh, maybe a little more. Ken Camnetti, that might be like a $3 can or so. Then we have Mark McGuire again. Kenny Lofton. Another Camnetti. Yvonne Rodriguez. So some of these cards you've seen already because they're just reusing the same images on the card. There's Juan gone. And I'm trying to make sure these don't fall over. I don't think we saw this one yet. Greg Maddox. That's a nice one. That would be a nice can to have. Greg Maddox and a Tony Gwynn. And we still have this whole second layer. So again, we'll just go through these and show you what we got here. The first one, we've got another A-Rod can. And we have another Griffey Jr., Ken Griffey Jr. can. Another Kenny Lofton. Another Mo Vaughn. Probably will see these on average, like um, probably two per player on average. Andy Pettit. Again, there's 24 different designs, 48 cans in this case. Another John Smoltz, Smoltzy. Trying to make sure these don't fall over to protect the cards inside. The Big Hurt, Frank Thomas. Barry Bonds again. Barry, and then we have a McGuire. Our third, Cal Ripken Jr. I think that's three Ripkins. At least our second, Manny. Also another Ken Camnetti, probably about two or three of him. Maybe four, because here's another Cam. Another Tony Gwynn. Then we have another Cal Ripken Jr. Dang, lots of Cal Ripken Juniors. That's good, because I've got some Cal Ripken Jr. fans out there that I can send those off to. Sorry for all the bashing around of the cans there. It's probably loud in the camera. Derek Jeter is a nice can there. I think that's the only Derek Jeter can that we've pulled so far. Then we have Ryan Klesko. You guys might remember Ryan Klesko. He was signing autographs out in Chicago at the National a couple weeks ago on opening day on the Wednesday. Another Mark McGuire. There's a Chipper Jones. Nice Chipper Jones. I almost said card there. Nice Chipper Jones can. Jeff Bagwell can. That's our first bagpipes can. And three more cans left before we conclude this case break. An unorthodox case break with cans. Greg Maddox. And we have another Juan Gonzalez. And the last can. Who's it going to be? It is none other than Andy Pettit. So those are all of the cans that we have. I hope you guys enjoyed this case break of 1997 pinnacle inside the first ever cards in a can and also the last ever cards in a can they did it one more year 1998 and uh, obviously it just didn't catch on um because they discontinued it i guess they were trying to find a way to keep the hobby uh going there because 
Um, you guys are all aware that the hobby went into a down cycle for sure in the late 90s. So they tried this. I guess it was a nice idea. The cans do look cool if you would put them on display. Um, but for me, as a kid, I never was really into it. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. We're almost at 40,000 subscribers. I hope to reach that within the next couple days. We have a live stream tomorrow of 2019 Tops Archives starting at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And then on Thursday night, it's probably around like 8, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, we'll be doing the 1979 Tops Baseball Card Exchange Authenticated Box, which is going to be awesome. I hope you can watch that. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your evening, and I'll see you all later.